the book of James. When I was about 16, 17 years old, I definitely was a hell raiser. And I became a Christian. Put my faith in Christ and my drunk mama. And little did I know, one of the first things I would do is I would be challenged to study the book of James. Five chapters. And I went to a competition. I was this long-haired hippie guy. Sort of. Love sports, playing sports, all that kind of stuff. And you know how we are. We're just, we're just mean. Some of us. That's the way I was. And so I went to this competition for the youth group of this church. And uh, with a little goody two-shoes, Miss Spiritual Lady, she was my partner. And I didn't know a thing about the Bible. And the competition was on the book of James. Any question from the book of James? So I'd been a pretty decent student. So I said, well, why can't we just memorize the five chapters? I'd never even read the Bible. So that's what we did. Me and Miss Goody Two-Shoes, Tammy Mel. We memorized the book of James. And needless to say, when we got to the competition, we smoked their doors. Because we had memorized that book. But little did I know, it really had nothing to do with that competition. God was preparing my life to serve Him. And He needed to smack me upside the head with a five-chapter book that is ugly. Amen? And so He worked on me with this little book. So I call it Rough and Real. I also call this little book Tough Talk. Amen? And so I've taught it over the years. And we're uh, having a time with you today. Tough Talk from the book of James. Let's go now to the end of chapter 4. And it's just a little Bible study format. I'll preach a whole different message the next hour. If you get a chance to stay with us, come on and stay for a totally different message. Title of the message today, say it with me. Live, boy, you're all sweet. One more time. Live today. Okay, let's talk about it. Live today. Last week's message was the war within. There's a war going on. James wrote this little five-chapter book. He was the pastor of the church of Jerusalem, ground zero, where everybody was being persecuted, hunted down like dogs. They were being killed, slaughtered for their faith in Jesus Christ. And he wrote them this five-chapter book on how to make it, how they could hang in there, how they could have joy and peace in their heart, regardless of the circumstances of the night before they lost their home or they were on the run, they were being hunted down. They needed something. He could either pat them on the head or he could give them something strong. To help them survive. Amen? Boy, if I'm going to survive, I need something strong. Amen? I don't need a little quick fix. He gave them something they could live by. And so instead of last week pointing the finger at other people and saying, you know, that person's bad or this person's got this problem, James tried to say, hey, look, the war's within you. You've got the problem. Deal with you. And that's what we talked about last week. Today, we're going to finish that little end of that Thought with this message, live today. It's not a big, long message. I think we're going to make it. Here we go. James 4, 13. Great verses. Go to now, you that say, today or tomorrow, I'll go into such a city. I'm going to continue there a year. I'm going to buy me some stuff. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to get me some gain. Whereas you don't know what's going to be on the morrow. Say that with me. Whereas you don't know what's going to be on the what. How many ever had something happen to you tomorrow? I screwed your life up. Can I see your hands? Oh my God. How many ever had big plans and something happened on tomorrow and screwed your life up? Oh yeah. I'm going to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. You don't know what you're going to do. You don't know what hell's going to hit you upside the head tomorrow. Do you really? Say. Uh Uh-uh. You don't know what's going to be on tomorrow. But what is your life, man? It's a vapor. It appears for a little time, then vanishes away. How many in the room are feeling life has just gone by pretty quick? Can I see your hand? Isn't that a crazy thing? Amen. Where'd it go? They were fussing among themselves. They were struggling in this little, this little community of new believers being hunted down like dogs and they were starting to devour one another and eat on one another and hurt one another. And James says, what are you doing? What are you doing? And church does that so often. We gossip, we complain, we get on each other's nerves. What are we thinking? We need each other. Are y'all hearing me today? Let the other churches have that crap. Excuse me. I don't want it. I want to come to a place 
where I can hug your neck, brother. Amen? I can love on you. I can expect to come here on Fellowship Church on Sunday morning, and I can absolutely expect to be encouraged. I don't know what's coming on tomorrow. Amen? My wife's a vapor. It appears for a little time and it's gone. It vanishes away. That's what the Bible says. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Do we? Amen? We don't. Does it mean we shouldn't plan? He's not saying that. But so often, we act like we're going to live here forever. You need to live like you're leaving. Say that with me. You need to live like you're leaving. One more time. You need to live like you're leaving one day. So many of us live like we're going to stay all the time. Your life's a vapor. Here's for a little time. We don't even know if we're going to be here tomorrow. We don't know. Keep looking. Verse 15. For you ought to say, say it with me, if the Lord wills, we shall what? Live. And we're going to do this, or we're going to do that. If who wills it, say? The Lord wills it. That's what James is trying to teach. And he's trying to teach his church as well, guys. Your mama was hauled off to prison. Your daddy was left in shackles. Your family was, was killed for the faith in Jesus. And you're looking at tomorrow? Don't you think it would be wise if you lived today? With all the trouble around you? Focus, man. Get the most out of 24. I call it 24. It's all you have. 24. It's all you have. Make the most of 24. I had a lady come see me this week for some counseling. I'm not doing a lot of counseling right now these days. So I'll tell you that. So don't be coming flooded. Amen. However, occasionally I'll do a little counseling. And so this lady came to me and she could not believe I talked to her for an hour and 20 minutes. She couldn't believe it, that I gave her my time, that I entered into her grief and problem. And she just couldn't believe it. And I was like, well, why wouldn't I? You're in my day. It's all I got. So I'm going to give it all I got. If you're in front of me, why wouldn't I preach Every Sunday with everything I had. Why wouldn't I? All I got. May as well do the best I can. Amen? We need to live like that. I'm not saying I'm a great example of doing that, but I have been doing that better for a while in my life. I encourage you to do it. Today is all we've been given. It's all we have. Amen? And you ought to feel good about your day. You, you, got, a, you got your tail out of bed and came to church this morning, didn't you? Come on, let's praise the Lord because you got your tail up. Amen. You ought to feel good about that. Satan comes on your back this week, you just point him back. Hey! Started my week with Jesus and my other day has been with Jesus. But now you rejoice and you're boasting. I'm going to do this tomorrow. i got these big things I'm going to do. Yeah. All such rejoicing is what? Evil. James is tough. You've got to remember this is a suffering church. They're trying to look forward to a little future and he's slamming them for doing that. Because he knows some of them ain't going to have a future. Some of them, this is the last day you're going to be on this earth. You're going to be killed for your faith in Jesus. That's tough. Presuming on tomorrow is what? One more time. Presuming on tomorrow is what? Tomorrow is the favorite day of the lazy man. Say that with me. Tomorrow is the favorite day of the I'll get around to it tomorrow because you're lazy. Come on. Do it today. Well, it's Sunday. I can't do it today. Why not you in church? Go home and do it. Say, I don't know. I shouldn't be doing that. It's Sunday. I don't know why. I used to think that way. You know what I've been doing lately after church? Ooh, you're going to think I'm sacrilegious. I've been preaching like the house is on fire. Then I got a a buddy of mine who's like a pro golfer. I'm talking a pro golfer. And he takes me to play golf on Sunday afternoon. That's what I've been doing lately. Instead of watching golf on TV, I just sit in the cart and watch him. <laughs> wow, that's incredible. <laughs> and then I hit the ball. like, what the heck? But it's amazing. Playing with a pro, you get better. Amen? But this fellow knows the suffering and so the pain I've been going through. And he's just, it's his way to minister back into my life because he works every other day. So he said, can you go play golf with me on Sunday? I'm like, no, I can't do that because it's Sunday. I can't do that. I did. 
I said, I'm too tired. There's no way I can even swing a club. You know what? It's amazing. I've been going. I've been fine. Yeah, praise the Lord. Funny, huh? Even with a bad back. It's all right, ain't it, if I don't go crazy? Amen? I don't know why I said all that. Let's keep going. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it's sin. Let's learn that verse. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. One more time. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. If there's something you know you can do today and it's good, go do it. Amen? Presuming upon tomorrow is not right, so stop it. Live in the now. Live today. Live your life today. Not doing good today is what? Well, I'll do that good tomorrow. Why don't you do some good today? Say, well, I'll go see my neighbor tomorrow. Why don't you go see him today? If there's a good thing you can do today, why put it off till tomorrow if you can go ahead and do it now? You understand what I'm saying? That's what James is saying. Life's a vapor. You can have all these big, grandiose plans. Do it. Do it quickly. Live that way. You start squeezing your day. I get, I get more out of my day. Amen? I worked a little construction project yesterday with a buddy of mine. We work like dogs. You couldn't have paid people to work like I worked yesterday. I got all cut up, my legs all bleeding and bruised and all kinds of mess we were working on. We were ripping walls out and everything. It was good for me. It was good for me. You know what? Do something. You can go do something with a friend. You can do something good. You're not sinning. You're not getting in trouble. It's good, man. Find something good to do and do it. You hear what I'm talking about? Okay, here we go. Life becomes so much more precious to people when they're about to what? Lose it. See, that's my business. I deal with people many times who are dying. Who get words of cancer. They don't know they're going to die. Many of them think they are. Many of them do. We all will. It's amazing how much more life becomes precious. Relationships become more precious. Why? Because they don't think they have much time left. Here's the question. What makes you think you do? Say. You ever know anybody that was younger than you that died? Can I see your hand? Could be you. You don't have to lose it to live it. Would you say that with me? You don't have to... to one more time. You don't have to... Well, I know I'm getting on your nerves. I do it on purpose. You don't have to lose it. Why have I got to get a terminal disease for me to start living my life? Amen. Say it. Start living today. If I don't, it's sin. That's what James is saying. Well, but this happened to me yesterday and I can't live today. That was yesterday. You don't have a tomorrow. Live today, baby. That's what he's saying. Amen? Y'all didn't know the Bible. That's sort of fun, isn't it? Say, hey, if you want to be George Bush Sr. and jump out of an airplane, go do it! Why not? Say. Years ago, I, I parachuted out of an airplane. Like a nut. Why not? If there's something you can do. It's not sin. Why not do it? Do it today. Are you hearing me? This is the only day I know I have. I'm alive, so I know I got this one. I might not be very bright, but I got that one. Amen. I got up this morning, did everything I normally do in my morning, came over here and prayed with the fellows. I don't know what my life is. It's a vapor. Before I knew it, 
I'm hugging necks. For I knew it, I'm singing for Jesus. For I knew it, I'm preaching His Word. Just never know, do you? Live it. You got it? Live it. That's what James is teaching. It's live today, man. Just several things I want to say in closing. Be saved today. Be saved today. 2 Corinthians 6 2, for he said, I've heard thee at a time except in the day of salvation have I succored you or have I called you. Behold, now is what? The what? Accepted time. Behold, what? Now is the what? Day of. Today is the day for you to be saved. Well, I'll trust Jesus later when I get all my sin junk straightened out and, you know, I stop living with this woman or something. Well, die and go to hell then if that's what you want. That's craziness. Be saved when? I get saved tomorrow. You might go to hell tomorrow. How about that? Jesus loves you today. You think He'll love you more tomorrow than today? Yes or no? Uh Uh-uh. He loves you today. You mean He loves you with all my my sin? That's why He died for you because of all your sin. Be saved today. But you don't understand. No, I don't understand. You're goofy. You mean my sins can be forgiven. God loves me. My name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If I put my faith and I believe in Him, you mean I don't have to give a lot of money. I don't have to work to go to heaven. Matter of fact, He says none of that's going to work anyway. He says, believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be what? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be... For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not but have everlasting... Did He say that throughout His book? Sure He did. So when should you be saved? Next Sunday? When? Pretty good, huh? Be saved when? Today. I'm sure glad Mama drugged me up to that church. And I heard I could get saved. It's crazy. He'd save me. He'll save anybody in this room. Amen. Be saved today. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be what? Saved. Pray to Him. We're going to do that in a little bit at the close of the service. You can do it right now, right where you sit. Amen. Get right with God when? Today! Hey, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, I'll get right with God later. Why would you do that? What if you don't have a tomorrow? What if, he, what if the next thing you're going to be doing is standing before Him? And you could confess that. Amen? Or why screw up another day? If you get another day, confess it today. And now I can live my life free today. And I can go into a tomorrow if I have one free from that. Amen? Say, you ought to confess your sins every day. Every day. It's a good practice to do it several times throughout the day. Start living like that. Start asking the Lord, you reveal things in my life that's not right with you. I want to get that off me. I don't want to live like that. Get right with who? Others today. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and you remember that your brother has aught against you, leave your gift at the altar. Go your way. First be reconciled to your who? And then you come off of your gift. Before you get real spiritual and all super religious on us, get right with other people. Amen? When should I get right with somebody? Today. What would keep you from getting right with somebody today? Well, they might not want to hear it. Or they might not... Hey, listen, when you go and you try to get right with somebody and you're going to apologize, don't point out the bad things they've done to you. I'm sorry, but you know you really did this to me. Go and go and make it right as, on your part. And do it when? When? I thought I heard some tomorrows out there. Today, baby Johnny. Amen. Come on. Love, family, and friends when? Today. If anything, my trial that I'm going through has taught me is to love your family and love your friends today. My struggle, I have never seen anybody have more friends than I have. Nobody. 
Let's walk around and see. It's crazy. Isn't that crazy? My struggle has caused me to love more. Have y'all been noticing I love more? I hope you see I love more. I want to love more. Amen? And the family I have, I want to love them with everything inside of me. Because I don't know when I might not have them no more. Amen? Let's do that today. Let's do it today. Amen? That's all we got. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loves is born of God and knows of God. He that loveth not knows not God, for God is what? Amen. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love who? One another. Come on, we're almost done. Encourage somebody when? If the Lord lays it on your heart, or even if He doesn't lay it on your heart, there's always somebody that can, you can encourage. Don't be pulling that the Lord's got to lay it on your heart. There's people all around you that give you some encouragement. Amen? Encouragement means to pump some courage into somebody. Do it today. Find somebody today and say, you know what, man, you're fantastic. You know what you mean to me? I'm going to tell you what you did. What you did was incredible. Thank you so much. Amen? Somebody's struggling. Hey, instead of trying to preach to them, give them a scripture of encouragement. Amen? You're listening to me. Do it today. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Why don't you tell somebody that? Some businessmen, businesswomen in our church, why don't you go up to them and say, man, I hope you're going to, your business, man, I'm just praying for your business. I want you to succeed. I know these are tough times. Amen? How about somebody raising children, a single parent, go up to them and say, you know what, I see you. You're doing an incredible job with your child. I love you. It's amazing. I bet they don't hear that much. Come on. Give something away when? It's something. We always leave something to people when we want. Die. Why don't you leave it? Why don't you go give somebody something today? If there's a family member that you love, a friend that you love, somebody, why don't you give something today? My neighbor across my mother's fence, my mother was a poor country woman. She'd go to that fence every day in the backyard, the pecan trees back in the backyard. Old country home. Mama would go to that fence every day. I didn't know this until she was murdered. And her neighbor came and told me. She said, your mama came and spoke to me every day at this fence. And she said, there was never a day that your mother didn't have something to give me. Maybe some biscuits from the night before. Some country sausage she'd cook for breakfast. Or maybe a quart of soup or something that she'd put together. Every day. She's giving something away. Every day. Giving something away. My mother was dead for three months. And I was still getting little rebate checks. She would rebate and send a check to me. So I could go down here to Ron's and get me a couple of eggs in the morning and a cup of coffee with a little rebate check. Those three months after she died, I never cashed one of those checks. I kept them as a memorial to my mother. Giving me something every day. Isn't that a great heritage? Give something away today. Every man according as he purposes in his heart. If you don't purpose in your heart to give something, you ain't going to do it. So let him give, not what? Grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves what kind of giver? That's why at Fellowship, if you can't give it cheerfully, keep it because God doesn't love what you're doing anyway. Amen? But He loves it when you do. Tomorrow really never comes. Say it with me. 